Good after morning. Hey, how are you doing? Welcome into twitch.tv forward slash uploads. Got there eventually. My name is Graham Dan. I'm joined by the man that we call Bibi. Hello, Graham. Uh, it's nice to see that we've just ch- uh, traded places. I was sat there yesterday. You were sat here. <laughs> well, your version. Well, of not me, in your room. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What are you doing? God damn, man. And, then, yeah. and now you're sat there and I'm sat here. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome in, everyone, though. Um, yeah, we have traded places. We just don't like each other. Ships in the night. It's, it's one of those things like Ant and Deck. Like, they look like they're, uh, they're, they're buddies and stuff. They hate each other in real life. And that's pretty much where <laughs> me and Bibi are now. We just refuse to be seen in the same room as each other. It's been Absolutely. weeks, weeks since we were in the same room as each other. So, you know, Genuinely, we... like, two and a half weeks. Just, just fucking hate you, mate. I hate you, mate. Well, this, this beef jerky will be off by the time you come in. Nah, nah, nah. Because what you don't know is I already opened it and then just ate it and then just sealed it up and put stuff like in it. It's like chopped, <laughs> chopped up bits of stuff. Um, that jerky is fucking balling that. I was sat there yesterday looking down at it like, Oof, I wonder if Bibi will know if I just like steal some <laughs> I will know. <laughs> uh, but anyway, welcome in. Welcome in. How are you all doing? My name is Graham Day, as mentioned. This is Bibi, as mentioned. But what I didn't mention is that we are Ice Cream Uploads and this, in true ice creamy fashion, is the Scoop, the UK's number one video game podcast, if we do say so ourselves we go live on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads each and every single weekday at 10 a.m ish 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 ish. and i'm gonna stop for just a second because i can see ronaldo in the chat but it's not the viva ronaldo that i'm I'm used to it uh because i mean that that's kind of obvious because it was obviously posted by someone called aguero so it wouldn't be posting <laughs> the i did shout you out aguero the other day i don't know if you i think it was yesterday day before whenever um i saw you drop into the chat and i said hey how are you doing and i said i'm assuming you came through with uh jumbo ashes raid when Bibi was streaming the other day because obviously i see you in there a lot uh and and yeah 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 yeah, yeah. welcome in dude how are you doing uh lake good morning uh he says die fifa die to which i responded with are you speaking german is that the the fifa the is that what it is <laughs> simpsons quote and he got it in one absolutely nailed it in one for those that don't know it's the sad show bob where he's got die bart die on his chest and so yeah there you go if you if you did know then you're an og and i appreciate you but jumping back into the uh introduction obviously we do go live on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads each and every single weekday at 10 a.m ish it's almost 1 p.m so you know this is where we have a an additional phrase good after morning good morning yeah. Ish. So yeah, do feel free to get involved over the next hour or so because we do stream live on Twitch, but the live stream is turned into a podcast, a video on YouTube, and an audio podcast on iTunes and Spotify and SoundCloud and Google Play. There is lots of places where over one hundred and thirty thousand people have got involved in the show. Please do feel free to get involved. We will give you our thoughts and impressions on the biggest, the best, and the breaking stories. But we want to hear your thoughts and impressions. Then we want to hear your thoughts and impressions on our thoughts and impressions. And it is important that you do. Like I say, this is turned into into a podcast, and there's lots of people that need your input. So make sure you do get involved. Before we jump into the stories, though, we have some pretty uh, meaty stories today. One that is particularly meaty for our community uh, because it involves football games. Um, Let me remind you that we do something called the Loot Drop. Every month... One subscriber bags themselves a prize just for being a sub to the channel. There's nothing else that needs to be done. Um, and that's just one of the ways that we give back to the community. I can shout out Chaos, uh, who won this week. Monday was mm-hmm. the first, uh, was this month's loot drop. He bagged himself one of these, the ICU blackout baseball cap. Um, and it's been processed and will be sent out to him today. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So he should hopefully have that by the end of the week. Um, as well as that exclamation mark, Astro, you can see that these are beautiful Astro E40 headsets. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, so yeah, do feel free to check out Astro if you want to buy yourself some uh, some of our exclusive merch. It's not really exclusive merch. It's Astro. You, anyone can buy it. But you could use our discount code, you know. You save yourself a little bit of money in the process. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Yuki, by the way. Um, AKA, you can, uh, you can do it. Yuki N do it uh, on Twitch. She uh, created her own set of custom Astro um, A40s and used our code. So not only does she have a badass custom headset, but saved some money and supported our channel in the process. So that's just like goat maneuvers. So GG's, you appreciate the support very, very much. If anyone else does want to get involved, let me jump into the uh, the big bib screen. As you can see behind him on the walls, you can see Astro, insert coin, GT Omega, and Twitch. Uh, not so much on the Twitch, but if you type in exclamation mark Astro, exclamation mark insert coin, or exclamation mark GT Omega, you will get links through to all of those uh, where you can save yourself a bit of money using our discount codes. And I'm invisible in this screen. I haven't, I haven't fully set up a background, so you know, just sat here with, a, <laughs> with an invisible room. Nice. It's floating. <laughs> uh, let's jump into the split screen. I'll reach Pip. 
good after morning. Yeah, it's five to one. It is five to one. It's fine. It's ten a.m. ish, somewhere, 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 somewhere. Uh, pretty spicy news today. You, oh, apologies if you do hear a noise coming through the background. There is work being done. Uh, Sex Barn version two is being built in the house. If that doesn't mean anything to you, don't worry. That's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Oh no, I'm trying to figure out uh, split screen old ish. Is that the one? I don't know what. What does that? Logos behind it change. I'm just holding on this for a second. Let me see. I know that we've got sponsors and logos overlapping. I want to make sure that that yeah, okay, okay. Sponsors, let's move you guys over there for this one. Nice. Nice. Okay. Um uh, yeah, the reason I was I was holding on that for those that can see is Bibby's now in the ICU studio, but if I turn that off, is at Bibby's home. So yeah, that's the difference. Nice. <laughs> Okay, so the biggest story of the day is the fact that after almost 30 years, FIFA is dead. FIFA, the game, is dead. Dead. Well, kind of, kind of, ish, ish, ish. EA Sports FIFA is no more. The game still exists, but the branding does not. After almost 30 years, EA is officially ditching the FIFA brand. Say hello to EA Sports FC. That is the biggest story of the day. We'll jump into that. And then sticking with EA... Uh, we have another story. EA has an undisclosed major IP and a remake planned for release in early 2023. Company shares its release slate for the rest of the current fiscal year. So some stuff, stuff, new stuff from EA. Nice. Um, elsewhere, Steam's most wish li- uh, most wishlisted game is delayed by nearly a year. That could be anything. But the reason we've included this is because it's not anything. It's something that we are massively invested in, something that we want to spend a lot of time playing, and we can't do it for almost a year. <laughs> and that is the day before. We have we have featured this at every uh, turn, every new bit of news. And if you don't know what it is, we will go through that in our third story mm-hmm. of the day. Then Gotham Knights, which we spoke about yesterday, uh, showing off some of the gameplay stuff, uh, Oh no, did that? Did we? Did we? Maybe I just watched the video. I can't remember. We spoke about it recently, and then then I watched the video in the afternoon. Anyway, I know that. But bad news: if you haven't got next gen console, you can't play Gotham Knights. It's not coming out on the PS4 and the Xbox One. And then finally, good news ish for Resident Evil fans. We have Resident Evil news. Yes, good news. It's about Resident Evil Reverse. Oh, is that good news? <laughs> oh, uh, we'll, bad news. <laughs> we'll pick it apart as we get to it. But for now. Uh, our headline story is about uh, well, not FIFA. Would you would you would you play a football game if it changed its name, babe? Uh, absolutely, Graham. Yeah. I mean, did you did you play SS, which became PES, which became eFootball? Yeah, just uh, yes, it's, it's... yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, yeah, we'll come back. We'll pick all of that apart afterwards. For now, though, Tom Phillips at Eurogamer has the headline story. After almost thirty years, EA is officially ditching the FIFA brand. Say hello to EA Sports FC. So after almost 30 years, EA's flagship football series will ditch its FIFA branding from next year. Beginning in 2023, FIFA's new name will be EA Sports FC. Uh, For anyone that hasn't been watching the scoop for the past six months we've been saying that pretty much all the time. Mm -hmm. It was it was we we got that news exclusively, like everyone else, through the internet. Um, and we've been talking about it ever since, so there you go. Uh, so FIFA's new name will be EA Sports FC, though expect the game to remain otherwise unchanged with the same wide array of club and player licenses as well as the usual game modes. The widely expected move was confirmed today uh, via press release shortly before EA's annual financial briefing. Quote, Everything you love about our games will be part of EA Sports FC. The same great experience as modes, leagues, tournaments, clubs and athletes. EA Sport exec Cam Webber wrote, Ultimate Team, Career Mode, Pro Clubs and Volta Football will all be there. Our unique licensing portfolio of more than 19,000 players, 700 plus teams, 100 plus stadiums and 30 leagues that we've continued to invest in for decades will still be there, uniquely in EA Sports FC. That includes exclusive partnerships with the Premier League, La Liga, Bundesliga, Serie A, the MLS, and more to come. End quote. Today's press release includes a flurry of enthusiastic quotes from the Premier League, La Liga, Bundesliga, UEFA, Conmebol, and Nike. Should be Nike, but nope, nope. All reinforcing their commitment to stick with EA through the name change. So why change? Question mark. Today, EA Sports FC uh, will be a new 
quote, independent platform, end quote, that brings opportunity to, uh, opportunity to innovate and evolve. Exactly how remains to be seen. But a New York Times report last year suggested FIFA wanted more than double the amount of money it currently got from EA for the latter to renew its license, amounting to over $1 billion for each four-year World Cup cycle as well as a singular focus on the sport itself. EA, meanwhile, reportedly wanted to explore other avenues using the FIFA license, such as video game tournaments and digital products like NFTs. Uh, we first heard of EA's plans to ditch FIFA back in October last year when the publisher said it was exploring the idea shortly after a trademark for EA Sports FC was spotted, suggesting that EA had already settled on a new name tag. EA then ramped up its rhetoric again in February this year when boss Andrew Wilson described FIFA as simply simply four letters on the front of a box <laughs> uh, and um, an impediment to the pub uh, publisher's ambitions for the series. Quote, in a World Cup year, of course, we get access to the World Cup, Wilson continued at the time. But in the broader context of global football on an annualised basis, the World Cup is important, but it's not the most important. We have 300 other licences that give us content, uh, give us the content that our players engage with and the mo uh, with the most and the most deeply. As for this year, which is, of course, a World Cup year, the upcoming FIFA 23 will be released by EA with its current branding as the last game in the series to do so. Quote, uh, we are committed to ensuring the next FIFA is our best ever, Weber concluded, with more features, game modes, World Cup content, clubs, leagues, competitions and players than any FIFA title before. EA said it would share more detail on EA Sports FC in summer 2023. So... Over 12 months away. They've got that in nice and early because, obviously, uh, trading, investment call. A lot of people will be like, why Why now? Why now? It's just one of those finance things. You've got to get it out in front. And that's one thing that EA do very, very well, almost to a negative. They announce stuff super early, like they did with the Juventus, Piemont FC and stuff like that. But, but yeah, there you go. Um, do you know what? I think we can stop there. We don't have to go through the last couple of paragraphs. We can leave that as is. The wrap-up is, though, that after almost 30 years... EA Sports FIFA will be no more. EA Sports mm. FC is the future. I mean, it's, 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 it's a bit snappier. They've lost two letters. So, I mean, that's something. Yeah. <laughs> what are your thoughts, Pip? Yeah, I mean, it's just going to go down as EA FC now, isn't it? Like, obviously, people have got accustomed to using the term FIFA, which obviously is the footballing federation rather than the people who make the game, um, which is obviously what EA Sports is wanting to move away from. The licensing is ridiculously expensive for the sake of having a World Cup every four years and a couple of licenses that they end up getting with that. But the fact that they still have all of the leagues licensed, they still have FIFA Pro, so they'll be able to have all of the players licensed within the game as well. Nothing's changing for them apart from the little sticker that goes on the front of the case, um, which gives them access to something every four years, which you can put it in, you can still put the same game mode into the game, but just not call it the World Cup and people will know exactly what it is. They can do all of the um, foot SBCs, they can have all of the um, different cards, the special cards that come out, they'll just call it the World Event or something like that. International Tournament. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so easy to get around and people people are very good at filling in the blanks. Like obviously we've had this with Pez forever where we've had to fill in the blanks ourselves. Um, but we know exactly what's going on. If there's a special tournament happening alongside a very special tournament that's happening in the real world of football, we can fill in the blanks. We're not stupid. Um, but it's going to save them a lot of money to spend elsewhere. Now, well, now onto that point. From the video that EA Sports put out yesterday, it does look like they're going to be getting the WSL in there, which is going to be a very small number of teams that are probably going to be included. I can't imagine it's going to have all the, the women's teams from around the world. I imagine they're probably going to focus on Spain, Italy and England and then fill in the blanks around that as well. Maybe some American teams in there as well. Um, but historically, they've only ever had international women's teams but from the pictures that have been posted it had City, Arsenal and I think Chelsea was the women's teams that got shown in the still images so again that's just another license that they've accrued I know a lot of people will be like no I'm not ass. I'm not going to play as a women's team in there but for young girls or it, it, women uh, adult women they're going to be 
thrilled with the fact that they're able to be able to play as these teams because women's football is getting bigger. Their Champions League football is getting bigger too. So it's it, it's something for everyone. Um, that's what football managers say included last time. This is like, we know not a lot of people are probably going to play it, but just for the sake of inclusion and having it in there. So people who are a fan of women's football, they've got the opportunity to be able to play the women's game within the game itself. Again, it's a massive thumbs up, but those licenses come with a fee. And that's, again, more licensing money that they've saved from FIFA and they'll put into the WSL, as well as a lot of other things as well. It could be that, this, that the it doesn't just go down to League 2 in England. Now it might go down to non-league. They could buy the non-league licenses. It would be a bar leak to get those licenses because of the way that the transfer markets work with non-league. You can sign players pretty much on a whim because they're not full-time contracts. They're probably just, a lot of them just earn an appearance fee and then if someone wants to say we'll pay you more they'll, they can move like the Hyde squad changed about 50 times last season the team that they started with definitely wasn't if when it, uh, I wouldn't be surprised when it comes to the non-league teams if they just sign the the likenesses of the clubs rather than the players and just go uh, okay this is Hyde United there's their uh, there's their stadium details we haven't recreated the stadium but that's the name maybe or whatever there's mm -hmm. their club badge and there is their kits and that is that for the season and then their squads yeah. is just like filler regions yeah exactly yeah, yeah. That, that again that, like you say that wouldn't surprise me but what also wouldn't surprise me Graham because obviously EA like to go a step further it wouldn't surprise me if they started to sponsor or partner with some teams from down in the bottom, the bottom of the leagues as well just to give like a cash injection I mean you would you technically be buying the league at that because any kind of money that passes through a non-league club is it, it, it guarantees their security for a number of years like when I, I, I always mention Hyde but obviously they are my second team they are my local club when we ended up getting through to the FA Cup third round proper and we was on TV like that that secured the, that secured us for like the next five years. I think they end up getting four hundred thousand pound, which doesn't seem a lot in real world money. But my God, that amount of money passing through a non league club is ridiculous. So it wouldn't surprise me if that was the kind of thing that EA wanted to do uh, to some clubs down there. That would be pretty so. cool. I think I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see them doing the content creator outreach stuff as well. Like obviously you can get hashtag United kits and stuff like that in the game through esports avenues, but hashtag United exists as a football team, as does mm. Under the Radar FC, as does Rebel FC, Cal Freezy team, and 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 others. Um, I wouldn't be surprised now if we start to see outreach towards like non-geographical influence of football teams now because yeah. um some of them are taking football seriously and i, I don't say that like with the ones that aren't uh, I, I mean in terms of some of them are, are set up as a football club some of them yeah. are set up primarily as content creation outfits there's no right or wrong way depending on what you want to do kind of thing but if they aren't set up as a football club i bet fifa was a hindrance there because they have said they were a bit of an impediment previously i bet they've gone mm -hmm. actually not an fa registered team uh yeah, you can only do 11 game. aside. Yeah. You can't do anything less. So I wouldn't be surprised if we do start to see a little bit more creativity in that. It one, could be awesome. I mean, there's a lot there's a lot there's a lot to discuss with this. I'm going to I'm going to start off on one thing that's very very uh unimportant though is the fact that obviously people are going to call it FIFA. It's not called FIFA, but it's going to be called FIFA. Just like people called uh ISS ISS and then slowly changed to I mean, I changed to Pro Evo, and then when the brand started to use the name Pez rather than Pro Evolution Soccer 20, 2008 or whatever, uh, and they changed to Pez 20 whatever, I was like, okay. And then obviously start working on the brand. You call it Pez. I changed over time from Pro Evo to Pez and now from Pez to eFootball. Um, so a lot of people will forever call this FIFA. Will the new audiences call it FIFA? Or do, I mean, the thing with EA Sports FC is it's it's actually very similar to EA Sports FIFA in the fact that it's EA Sports, which will get dropped because nobody ever calls it EA Sports Fight Night Round 3. Mm. It's you've got to drop play Fight yeah. Night. Um, yeah. So EA Sports will get dropped. Will people just start calling it FC? Could you imagine? Nah, like EA FC. That should be the bare minimum that people will call it. The, the thing is, though, but nobody called it EA FIFA. Yeah, they just called it FIFA. But without that name... But but FIFA. I mean, to be fair, it, when it, it was when it was eFootball Pez, I I don't know anyone that called it eFootball Pez. They just called it Pez still because the Pez was still in the name. But yeah. Obviously, now we've got no choice. We just call it eFootball. But the EA Sports FC, it, 
Put it this way, can you imagine Bateson going, right guys, we're going to play some EA Sports FC today. I, I can't see him saying it. I can't see it. It'll just be EFC, I reckon. I, I can see, like, Mimi jokey transition periods. Where we're going to play, I mean, is it EA Sports FC? We know it's FIFA, that sort of yeah. stuff. But I, I think I, I can see people just going, should we jump on, we jump on FC tonight uh, or whatever? Because it's two syllables, FC, yeah. FIFA, uh, kind of easier to set out. I mean, it doesn't sit right with me because it's, mm. it's like it like took me forever to get rid of Pro Evo out of my mindset. For Pez. <laughs> yeah, I still call it Pez in conversations. I still call it Pez. Uh, people don't like change, but that said, uh, it's like you see the same thing with controller demographics. Uh, people of uh, my age, um, a lot of people still use Square to shoot. Um, a lot of people don't. I mean, a lot of people that have switched over to FIFA have changed to FIFA controls. Some people are. Uh, title agnostic and we'll play whatever titles uh, whatever mm -hmm. controls you're meant to play within that game which absolutely warps my fragile little no, mind no I can't do that uh, Dan in the office does that which which he's like no I'll play the game how it's meant to be played from their perspective like what <laughs> I'll, I'll get yeah. into the box and I'm crossing it over the crossbar <laughs> absolutely <laughs> um, uh, mate I've known people that shoot with R1 don't ask me why <laughs> bizarre get out of shoot here. with R1 so no like, chance like the thing is, people still are set in their ways, and some people still. Uh, no, some people do change, but some people get set by the times, and, and you you could almost see it. It was like a social scrape. If you saw people that played football games when I was like between ten and eighteen, a lot of people shot with square. So you'd get to like events, and people would would come over and go, "Is it square to shoot?" Nice. And then obviously beyond that, FIFA became the massively dominant game in, in the UK. So then it was people started changing to circle. It'd be interesting to see if that same thing happens with name. As, names, it's like you get some people coming over and the branding clearly says EA Sports FC and people at EGX or Gamescom or wherever with the stand and go, is, it, is, it, is this FIFA? It's like, well, EA Sports FC. But then the young'uns are coming and coming through going, can I jump on FC? Or whatever. Mm. So be, yeah, completely not important. But that's the shit that kind of like gets in my mind is like, how do people, from a UX perspective, a user, how do people interact with, engage with the brand? So yeah. that, that'd be interesting to see. But anyway, let me jump back through the comments because there is, there is a lot of angles to pick up through. So we'll just see what people are talking about before we... Uh, <laughs> They never ask about what tackle is, do they? They just say square for shoot, not yeah. what's to tackle. They just they're always so aggressive. Like, what's the how do you score? What's the button to score? No, yeah. what would use the tackle? Everyone always thinks they're a striker, though, isn't it? It's that it's that like <laughs> mean machine thing. Like, th th there's a clip on mean machine which just absolutely sums up pro clubs, whatever. And it's like, okay, all your strikers over here, all your midfielders over there, all your defenders yeah. over there, and there's like one guy in midfield and like nine <laughs> strikers, and it's like, nope, <laughs> not quite. Uh, uh, okay, uh, well, here's to hoping. Uh, well, here's to hoping sorting out the issues that I have with. Oh, actually, let me jump back up first. I might, I might miss. Oh, no, I didn't miss anything. Uh, well, Ice, Iceman says, well, here's hoping sorting out the issues I have with player career were linked to the FIFA license and weren't just EA laziness. Uh, wishful thinking. We'll find out soon. Viv says, kill me now. I've spent four hours recording uh, recording tutorial videos for a customer using their kit. I can hear every breath I make. <sighs> <sighs> Welcome in. <sighs> To, yeah, yeah, yeah you, you miss all of your filters and, and yeah, yeah. Um, Lake says best ever. Yeah, right. It will be the same copy paste, uh, just polished yet again. It'll flop if they use the Frostbite engine. Still, it's outdated. I mean, I think it's one of those things. If it, if if they can take the name off it, and it'll be a success. They can take the engine, and it'll be a success. The thing you have to mm -hmm. th remember there, Lake, is that you're looking at that from a very different perspective of the masses. A lot of people just want to turn it on and play it and will tolerate it being mediocre, a bit good, whatever, because it's just like, okay, it's better than spreadsheets or being on a building site or fucking or whatever, where they've come from. It's their escapism. So a lot of people don't need it to be at the level where we, um, and that's as a community of fully engaged gamers, the mainstream don't necessarily need that full engagement. They just need it to be half decent enough to justify throwing another eight quid on this week for some uh, FIFA points or whatever. Uh, E-A-F-C, it's in the game. Uh, well, EA Sports FIFA's definitely not in the game. That's the whole point. Uh, won't they lose the World Cup? Uh, yes, but after this time. But that's the thing, though. They have lost the World Cup because of their FIFA exclusivity, but they technically can still get it back unless someone else buys FIFA's exclusivity. So they don't have the rights to FIFA and all of that that portfolio of properties, but they could in 
the next World Cup year go, actually, do you know what? 2026, uh, FIFA, we would like the World Cup. And they can go, yeah, all right, then that's a billion, please. And they'll go, yeah, go on then. Fuck it. Yeah, have it. Mm. Whatever. Um, or not. So, I mean, FIFA are probably going to push up the price for that one event as opposed to having it as part of the, the full package. It won't be more than the full package you'd have to feel, but for that specific event compared to getting it as part of a package, obviously, uh, economies of scale, they'll, they'll, make, they'll charge it more. But then that's when FIFA have got, okay, yeah, we can probably stomach that. We think we will get enough back returning on our investment, so that's fine. So they could still have it. That said, if... UFL or goals or eFootball or football manager. I mean, football manager is a bit different because it's not a playable game. But if one of those games throws a big wad of cash and goes, okay, we'll take the World Cup exclusively, then it won't be in FIFA. So they technically can still have the World Cup, but it's that's based off what we know right now. If it is exclusive to anyone else, then they can't. Uh, also, FIFA announced they are making their own game. Yeah, that just sounded like. Did you see the I thing? Can't see it. The, I can't did you see, see the that. comments last night though? Like from I can't remember who. It, some big head honcho at FIFA was like, mm. "Yeah, the thing is though, whichever game has the FIFA name on it, that's gonna be the best." And I'm just thinking, you have no idea, you absolute <laughs> whopper. Corrupt uh, bastards anyway, Graham. So forget about what any, what any of them say. But there is there is also a smaller caveat with this as well. So like EA have, have done a massive marketing campaign now to say that they're going to be called the AFC going forward. But what about if FIFA don't end up selling this to anybody else? Because there was, there was rumours that someone like UFL or Goals or Pez football we're potentially going to be picking up this license but what about if ea just kind of double bluff them shall we say and say we're not paying for this shit like the licenses that you're that you that you give us isn't worth the money we're walking away if fifa can no longer sell this license therefore they are losing millions of pounds what about if ea goes oh <laughs> didn't manage to sell it did you well if you if you're short on cash I will give you a couple of mil. Don't worry about it. We won't say no, no, but no hard feelings, no bad blood. We'll take it off your hands for a, a much smaller amount of money than you originally intended to sell it to us in the first place. I think they've already forced EA's hand. Uh, EA have made a change that they've probably been thinking about for a while. Why do we actually need FIFA anymore? We've outgrown them. They're getting all shirty, going, "Yeah, you need to pay us double, triple, billions, fucking tons because we're FIFA," and it's like. Man, I don't actually need you at all. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I, I, I've grown up. It's time for me to leave home. My house is much bigger than yours. My wage, my salary is much bigger than yours. Mum, dad at FIFA, I don't need you anymore. Um, and that's where they are now. So I reckon if that was to happen, I think I think FIFA is bullish. They don't. They earn billions anyway, so they they don't need money. So I don't think they'll buckle and go. Yeah, go on then. Give us. Give us. Give us short change and we'll, we'll sort it um because i think they're too proud and if they do that it weakens the value of their brand and stuff and ea have already put their brand um in the spotlight for the wrong reasons from fifa's perspective in terms of ea have walked away from the biggest property in football because they don't need it aka ea's f uh, football game is bigger than the football governing body so i don't think that they will i don't think ea would change back to being fifa ever i think they would go okay you've not sold it we'd, we'd take it off your hands i know you wanted 100 and, you wanted 300 million a year we will give you 80 million but we're not taking your name, so we're saving money on that. We're not taking your licensing restrictions because we're not using your name, so that's easier for you, and we're saving on that. We will have the World Cup, though, um, and we'll take the FIFA Club World Cup off you, and we'll give you £80 million for that and the ability to use all of your branding for your tournaments. Beyond that, nah, we're not bothered. I think something yeah. like that could happen, but all of... All the cards are in FIFA's hands, uh, as in, mm. no, EA's hands, should I say. Uh, they can go back and go... Don't want the whole package. If you want to, to work with us, your name is irrelevant now to us. We've outgrown that. We can cherry pick what we want. So if you want a big wedge of cash, we have tons of it. We can give some to you. But now it's not a case of we are uh, bent over backwards with a nice uh, knife against our throat going, if you want to stick with the name, you have to do what we say. Now they've got the knife away and gone, okay, I'm fine now. I'm stood up. Yeah. Don't need it. So I'll take that off you. And if you don't want me to take it off you, that's fine. I won't take it off you. I'll just do something else instead. So yeah. Well, there was there was a two ver there was two versions of Pez 
during the European Championships for the last couple of times, haven't they? So there's been the normal cover. And when I say two different versions, I don't mean there were two separate games. There were just two different cover arts. So there'd be the, the normal one that comes out. And then closer to the event, they would get a different cover with Euro, uh, Euro, uh, European Championships cover, like the one with Gareth Bale on, I think was the last one. Yeah, 2016 um, boxed one. And they, they, there was like a boxed PS. Uh, four with the Gareth Bale edition in it as well and stuff yeah. like that. I think we've actually still got that in the score in, in the cupboard. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's not it's not as if like they, they've just they've got the license for it for that year, and then closer to the event they just re-advertise it again. Say this is the home of the game. When it comes out, you'll get all the adverts, so you'll get all the scoreboards and the intros and stuff like that to go along with it. So like you say, that could be the way that FIFA end up. See, I've just done it in the way that EA Sports, eventually when it gets to a World Cup, they'll go, okay, well, the World Cup's coming. We'll give you 400 million or whatever the going rate is for it. I know that's an excessive amount of money. I don't know what the going rate is for it, but we'll give you a load of money for that event to have you in the game, but you won't still have like, you won't be, you won't have your logo on the front of the cover until the time is right and we'll re-release the cover art for the game or we'll have it in the role titles at the beginning but apart from that that's the only time that you're going to end up being in one of our games going forward which I don't think the way that they've been treated and the amount of times that they've uh, nearly had them bent over a barrel to be able to use their uh, branding within the game FIFA needs EA Sports more than EA Sports needs FIFA and I think that's what EA Sports are kind of doing with this they're going do you know what fuck you guys, we don't need your irrelevance for three years and then eventually when the World Cup comes along we'll get some stuff from you. Apart from that, you don't really give you much else apart from a lot of restrictions. We want to do seven aside, we want to do futsal, we want to do FIFA Street stuff and things like that, but you're not letting us do it. The um, thing is, they work with UEFA already and UEFA has all of that license, the full futsal leagues and UEFA legends stuff and FIFA are probably going, yeah, but it's not proper football, so you can't do any of that. And now they're like, okay, well, we can do what we want. And it's, it's almost like, imagine they were sat there and they were, like, I'll go back to that analogy of uh, FIFA being mum and dad and EA Sports being like the kid or whatever. It's almost like mum and dad are going, okay, you're in our house, you're living by our rules. And they've gone, yeah, okay, fine, mum and dad. Yeah, that's fine, mum and dad. And then mum and dad have just asked for too much and they've gone, do you know what, fuck yeah. it. Do you know what, I only wanted a little bit more, but now you can bollocks, I don't want any of it. And it's in that sort of situation. EA Sports, like you said, don't need the FIFA brand. FIFA the brand needed EA Sports more. The thing is, FIFA the brand will never say that. As I was saying, like the quotes last night talking about whichever game has the logo and the name on it will be the best game that's just branding the world doesn't exist that way the world has never opted to follow a name the world has always opted to follow the game and that's that's the way it is so yeah, it, yeah but it, it is the name of the game kind of thing is here's hoping we get more fifa street content because they've fucked up vault a big time this year and i've i've played next to no vault this year which is for the last three years that the game's been there for two solid years I played that on pro clubs whereas I've actually had to resort to playing foot this year which was the bane of my life for two months um, that quickly got put to the side but having no Volta really pissed me off this year I, or I, having Volta but not the way that it used to be I wonder if that's something from FIFA as well because it's like yeah you're not investing enough time and effort into 11 man football not stories of fictional stuff like that no 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 it should be 11, boots on the ground, 4-4-2, Brexit football. That sort of, like, approach. Shout out to Zaffa Cakes for the uh, references. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we do get more freedom in, invested in that sort of stuff now. Stuff off the ball. Like, having so. the, the ability to actively foul someone and actively handball or have handballs in the game and stuff like that. Things like that were in FIFA and were removed. And yeah. people always assumed it was like, why was that removed? It was It's a part of football. But the reason that was removed, because I could be wrong on this. I don't have an actual source. I've This has come from conversations over the years that were educated conversations. But I, like I say, I don't have uh, proof on this. But I was told that handballs and intentional fouls were removed from FIFA because that is not something that FIFA wants. FIFA, the, the body, wants in football. They don't want people having the ability to... You can't, you're not allowed to handball in football, so handballs should be removed because your players should never encourage... You shouldn't encourage players to intentionally uh, do something yeah. like that. You can... Did you ever play with handballs on? Uh P possibly I can't I can't remember it was horrendous 
it was so bad. There was so many penalties again because you don't realise how bad, how many times that ball, if you was to cross a ball in, how many times it would hit your player on the arm. Like if you it, you notice it more now if you played with them on with each football to if each football that your game played since because every time you go to whip in a ball now and it hits your defender because you don't get a handball for it you don't think that it's handball. But when the handballs was in the game, you was probably getting a penalty every single game, at least one. It was so bad because you can't do anything about it, can you? So it was. It, I, I was saying fouls. Fouls is wrong. I meant dives. That's what I meant. So, like you can <laughs> dive on Pez. That was removed from FIFA because that's not something that they want in the game. Footballers should never be allowed or encouraged to dive in the FIFA rules. So that should be removed from the game. And if I'm right, that's still right. Or am I wrong on that one? I don't play FIFA, so I don't know. But that that is something that I was told five, six years ago. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if you do see some more of that. It's a part of football, but it's not a part of FIFA mm. stuff coming back in as well. Um, okay, let me jump back up. Uh, uh, where do we get to? Uh, when you say FIFA, though, you hardly think of the governing body. You just think of the game you're playing. Exactly, Aguero. Exactly. And that's the thing. I don't... Uh, like, this is where EA Sports have the power. The only thing is, I did see a comment from someone about marketing. I think it was Iceman. Was it lower down? Um, oh, doesn't roll off the tongue though like fifa does easfc is not a good name from a marketing standpoint a miss from the marketing juggernaut that is ea sports thing is though where, where do they go what do they call it you can't fifa rolls off the tongue because ea sports football ea sports fifa football 97 or whatever didn't roll off the tongue so you just call it fifa um even though it's technically a misnomer you're giving it a name for something else something else's name so we will whittle it down and that's the thing is marketing has has its rules and ea sports fifa uh will have had that rule but then whittling it down over time is something that the community does so like i say it'd be interesting to see whether it just gets called fc in the end Do you want to play fc um yeah. and obviously we know it's ea sports fc 23 24 25 it'd be interesting to see whether it does just fall down to me being called fc um uh pez needs cross platform and all uh all good but but when maybe do you know says tost uh t-o-s-t 89 uh pass uh it's 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 in progress like have the cards oh, has got a date uh, uh end of may early june it's 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 in progress we know cross play is coming but we don't know more than that like the, it has been mentioned uh, mentioned somehow i mean ads do you I think someone you, can I read about you somewhere? Uh maybe. Yes. I, I would check out the uh, the eFootball website. That's probably the best way to go from that. I don't exactly know what what the latest is on that, but there is um like cross platform uh content progression stuff, I believe. I think it was mentioned in a press release. Uh the problem with women's teams is the ma in the main game is that it feels like a marketing thing that doesn't give the women's game enough respect. Um I I I I agree with that. I've said that before. Um I felt like it was only there to look, look, we have the ladies um, and not taken properly seriously. Um, there wasn't a league, was there? It was just an, it was an international tournament for yeah. the women that was in the game. Because I remember playing it the first year that they put it into the game because there was obviously achievements for it. So I wanted to go and grab them. But yeah, it was just an international tournament. There was nothing special about it. But that said, well, I will say that obviously resources and time, the fact that it is there might not be complete. And if that is just there to go, look, we're doing right things, great. That's not great. If it's there because it's the first step of right things, then okay, Rome wasn't built in a day. If it's just a step-by-step -step progression, then baby steps is better than no steps. So I can't really say on that one. Um, Rexon are in 22 purely because of Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But, but like, Recognised football team, also Ryan, uh, Ryan Reynolds. Uh, fucking someone at, at FIFA's probably just sat there and watched Deadpool 2 and gone, yeah, okay, we'll like him. We'll, we'll have him in. Which is, shows how corrupt it is because it's some fucking dudes in a boardroom going, yeah, okay, we'll get that because we know Ryan Reynolds is. And it's like, you do realise that Hashtag United are one of the most uh, engaged football teams in the world. But because you watch films, Wrexham is good. But because you don't watch YouTube, Hashtag United, hashtag United is bad. What the fuck? What the fuck? Um... Uh, where do we get to? 
Enzo, I'll read. Uh, wait a minute. We're talking about the old people. Square will always be shoot. Uh, shut up, you young people. Exactly. Me. Exactly. <laughs> Square has always been shoot for me. Uh, it'll be called FIFA for, for a few more years, at least. Agree. Circle for slide tackle. Happy now, baby? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Wicked slippers. Hey, the FIFA rights are not worth it. Agreed. Um, like I say, beyond the World Cup, which is once every four years, and the Club World Cup, which, let's be honest, it's like the uh, the league cup or the super league uh, super cup it's a mickey mouse trophy unless your team is in it uh if your team is in it then it's the best thing in the world yeah fucking let's go baby mm. but then for anyone else it's like oh, you, you won the shit cup uh and it it's only in that four week period where it's happening that it's something that people care about and then it disappears again and it's gone again uh so yeah club world cup almost irrelevant World Cup, massive, but every four years, you can't build a video game around. Yep, come back and we'll see you in four years' time. Nope. Mm. Uh, Going to be weird with what they do with the World Cup mode this year, as it's in November, December. I think this will be FIFA, the well, EA, should I say, just doing it. Look, here you go. Whereas in the past, they've done it as paid DLC or standalone games and stuff like that. I think this will just be a throw it at, uh, throw it away, effectively. Yeah, we'll get everyone in, have a bit of a play and stuff almost setting themselves up for the future of look at how how generous we are and get ready for our next game i could be wrong i could be wrong though um fifa 22 won't have a world cup mode as esports fc will be out by then no fifa 23 will be out by then which will be the last one to be called fifa so fifa 22 won't have the world cup mode fifa 23 will have a world cup mode and then esports fc comes from next year unless i've misread that one i believe that's what it was going to be um yeah, so beginning in 2023, FIFA's new name will be EA Sports FC, which is why we're not going to hear anything about it until summer 2023. So this year's game, FIFA 23, will still be a FIFA game. Uh, VAR cutscenes. As you imagine, <laughs> fucking yeah, yeah, that would be quality. <laughs> uh, if you turn it on the settings, you are able to have handballs in squad battles. Turn it off. Uh, bring back the journey, but with your own player, and rename it my journey. Uh, handball penalties were horrendously implemented. E football doesn't have diving. Uh, season two is set to have crossplay. I thought EA Sports FC was coming out in twenty twenty three. Won't there still be a FIFA twenty three? Exactly. That's what. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think women's football was added in FIFA sixteen and hasn't been adjusted since. Yeah, that's what I. So that's what I've spoken about when I spoke about it previously, uh, Aguero. The fact that. It was like a, a big song and dance and then just didn't really go anywhere. Um, and they've, they've, they've changed little bits. If if I'm, I could be incorrect. Uh, uh, this is very likely to be incorrect because I don't play a lot of FIFA, but like like pro clubs, you can have female avatars now, can't you? As opposed to it just be male. Uh, or am I wrong on that? Um, I could be wrong. But but that's probably a um, if that if I am wrong on that and you can't have male and female mixed teams that's probably a FIFA thing there in terms of obviously you can't have mixed teams in football so we don't allow it and if that is a thing that's possibly a FIFA thing whereas when EA Sports FC comes along it could be a do you know what it's just your representation in the video game it doesn't matter uh, what the character looks like as long as you have fun and it's an expression of yourself so yeah choose whatever body frame you want for your character. Um, it was literally just a marketing thing. Agreed, 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 as was all of it. So the name FIFA was a marketing thing. They chose FIFA just like they chose John Madden uh, because it was a brand to get behind. That's the reason why NBA is attached to football games. Uh, basketball games, should I say? Yep, it's a bit of a mix up if it's attached to football games, but basketball games because you know what you're getting with that. And that's why they went with FIFA. So it was all marketing decisions. It's all uh, that. Whereas. They're getting rid of it because it's irrelevant to marketing now. It markets itself. They don't need a, a, a nondescript word. FIFA is four letters of something like Federation International, whatever. I don't know. I fuck knows what it means. It's, I've, I've, I've read it many times and forgotten it many times because it's irrelevant and it doesn't need to be on the case of a game. So EA, 100% making the best decision there. If it's going to save you a billion dollars over four years, imagine how much more they could put back into the video game for that. I mean, that's a billion dollars every four years. That's that's more money than than mm -hmm. most video game studios ever see. So mm -hmm. that's like a huge potential for extra development resources there, which is the right decision for me. Uh, yeah, you can have a female build. Yeah, nice. So uh, UFC games as well. Yeah, e EAFC, EA, UFC. You got that. Yeah. I mean, that's the only thing that kind of makes me think FC might not catch on is this UFC. Um, and like that could 
be a bit close there. So it'll be. I'm interested to see how that bit does evolve. Anyway, EA have a lot of other evolving to do away from the football pitch as well. We're going to jump into our next news story today. This one is from Tom Ivan at BGC, and it says EA has an undisclosed quote major IP. End quote, and a remake planned for release in early 2023. So the company shares its release slate for the rest of the current fiscal year. <clears throat> so Ele Electronic Arts has said it's planning to release a major IP and a remake in the fourth quarter of its current fiscal year. Uh, the games are two of five titles scheduled to release during the three months ending the March 31st, 2023, four of which have not yet been publicly disclosed. EA provided an update on its release slate for the rest of the current fiscal year as part of its latest earnings report, which was published on Tuesday. The four undisclosed titles uh, scheduled for release in the fourth quarter are listed as Major IP, Partner Titled, Remake, and Sports Title. Uh, the previously announced game coming during the, the quarter is EA Sports PGA Tour. Uh, the Partner Title referred to could be Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order 2, which was, until recently, reportedly tagging a 2022 release. And other upcoming games from the publisher include Apex Legends Mobile, which will launch this month, and F1 2022, uh, which, is due, uh, which is being released on July the 1st. Uh, the final EA Sports FIFA game okay we know that that's fine EA will also launch Lord of the Rings Heroes of Middle Earth a mobile game this year um, I think that's that one free to play collectible RPG yeah okay that's fine uh, the third quarter end of December 31st will include the release of the next NHL game and the new Need for Speed okay there we go so four games plus um, EA Sports PGA Tour in the fourth quarter that's a busy old quarter for a year there. What are your thoughts, Bib? Have you got any idea what that could be? What those titles could be? I, I don't know how... I even know I've had it from you for two years. I still don't know how Jedi Fallen Order finished, so I don't know whether... But there must be an inkling of a sequel because that's what's been rumoured for the longest time now. So that's my gut instinct that there is going to be a second one. I can't see them doing another Battlefront. I think they've already mentioned that that won't be the case. Otherwise, they'd be working on it now. Um, yeah, I think all signs point point towards a, a Jedi Fallen Order 2. I, I don't know. I mean, the, the, there's always the same games that are going to get churned out. It's just what are the ones that you don't necessarily think of? Titanfall 3? <laughs> Ben's livid. <laughs> just you just hear the rumble from the NGB offices. What? What? Yeah. So, I'd, yeah, I think all signs point towards that, but I'd, I don't know. It could just be something could proper left field that you haven't seen for a while, but... Uh, what what would your money be on? Well, I'm trying to try and run through. So we've got um, major IP, partner title, remake, and sports title. Um, so sports title. Sports title is obviously FIFA, but it could be Madden, NHL, it could be anything. I mean, fourth quarter ends March the thirty first, twenty twenty three. So you feel it's got a start in January. And FIFA is out before then, mm. so it, that makes me think it's not FIFA. So but what? When did it? When did he mention the golf game? When? Because that obviously got delayed a year. Yeah, so that's separate. So for quarter four, yeah. I'll bring this back up on screen for those who can't see it. So fiscal year twenty twenty three title slate. So on oh no, a FIFA is is named in quarter two. So FIFA and Madden are in quarter two. Uh, NHL is in quarter three. What other sports games do they have? FIFA, Madden. Well, yeah, and NBA got ditched a long time ago. So is that going to be making a return? I mean, possibly. I don't know the season. I don't know when the season starts and ends with basketball. Same with baseball. Same with NHL, uh, NFL. I'd, I'd... UFC? Fuck if maybe? I know. Oh, Grand Slam Tennis. Do you remember that one? I mean, I'll take a tennis game. I'll take a tennis game, yes, please. But that's, that's, that's an odd quarter. If you're going to release that, surely you'd go yeah. summer. That's when ten tennis is... I mean, I know there's always Grand Slams throughout the year. January has the uh, Australian Open. Um, but New snooker game? I don't know. Maybe I'm just ethnocentric there because Wimbledon's in the summer and I think tennis is big seasons in the summer. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the tennis season is one month only. Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, like, it's like wrestling, isn't it? Everything leads to WrestleMania. <laughs> <laughs> but it's an interesting one. So we've got F1 in quarter one, FIFA and Madden in quarter two, Need for Speed and NHL in quarter three, PGA in quarter four, and then four titles which have not yet publicly been disclosed. A major IP could be anything. 
from mm. the uh, the EA slate. It could be something brand new. It could be Titanfall in theory. It could be um, pff, yeah, jump back in, pick of any of the big the big EA franchise EA franchises. Partner title. They say obviously they've said that that could be um, Jedi Fallen Order two remake. I mean. <laughs> Da, da, dum, dum, dum. Just because it's in the list, it, just because it, it's, uh, the other ones are in the list, doesn't mean that they can't be making a remake in Need for Speed. They could go underground. Mm. I, I can't see it, but I mean the the license for the mu- for the music itself in those games are what people remember it for. So whether or not they'll be able to relicense all of it, I don't know. But hey, it's difficult. Like this, you could adapt. You could put any three games into major IP partner title or sports uh, and and remake it. Does, the amount of the amount of games that they've obviously created over the last thirty years, it could be anything. Does previously uh, uh, titles that have previously not been publicly disclosed? Does that mean that something that we've never heard of at all, or does that mean things that they haven't confirmed specifically? Because remake could be Dead Space. Yeah, fair. We know they are making a Dead Space. So if they haven't, they mm-hmm. haven't publicly disclosed exactly when it's been released. So maybe because it does mm-hmm. say, I think it was just twenty twenty three that it's coming out. So if they're specifying that it's coming out in quarter four twenty twenty three, um, well, fiscal year twenty twenty three, uh, then that could be that. So that would be mm-hmm. partner title, Jedi Fallen Order two remake Dead mm-hmm. Space. It's <laughs> Do you know it could but, be? Uh, yeah, it could, it, they've got a new mobile game coming out for Lord of the Rings. Who's to say that they aren't going to be remaking the old PS2 games? But we, you've got Dragon Age as well. That was that was being talked about not so long ago. So is the major IP a new Dragon Age game? Like, I have, genuinely have no idea. But that's the beauty of stuff like this, isn't it? Waiting to see what it actually is going to be. Yeah. Because you'll yeah. find out at Gamescom. Or you'll find out at E3, and then it's just like, ooh, I don't think they're going to be just dropping this on us in quarter four, going, okay, it's October time, guess what? He's on shelves this week. <laughs> it's just not going to happen, is it? See, this is this is the cool thing, though, because this is where we start to get the exciting build-up content, because we start in these streams and through these investor calls, everyone's setting up their stall for the year ahead mm-hmm. without really telling you what it is. It's like, this is my sweet shop, nice. You can see <laughs> you can see all these sweets under this blanket. You can see a little bit of the shape, and I'm going to give you some clues as to what it tastes like but what it actually is you'll have to see for the in july toffee crisp ta-da! It's like, <laughs> like, uh, that, that sort of thing so it does get exciting because we know we've got the xbox showcase pretty soon we know ea play isn't happening so there's a good chance ea could be throwing their titles into the xbox showcase into summer games fest uh so within the next it's, it's june start of june the 12th of June, so one month and one day, we will have had two major conferences. A lot of that stuff could be announced there. And the fact that they're mentioning this at this point is kind of necessity because they have their investor call, but also could be necessity because they are just on the cusp of announcing it. They need to announce it to investors before they announce it publicly. So this could be just them going, okay, by the way, four titles are going to be announced across Xbox yeah. slash Summer Game Fest. So we could find all that stuff out in the next few weeks. Um Ads has just reminded me that there's no E3, E3 is dead. That's going to take some getting used to because immediately when I start thinking about gaming calendars, E3 is always the, obviously going to be there. So that's going to take getting used to not being there. See, I, I actually, like when you said E3, I don't think of E3 the event in that sort of sense because for me, E3 included EA Play uh, and any other events at the same time. E3 for me is like, I know that's what it is. It's like FIFA, the name is is made to reference EA Sports FIFA. Um E3 the name is is made to represent the the Electronic Entertainment Expo. 3E's E3 jobs good, but for me E3 is that two week period where Nintendo who aren't at E3 will do their Nintendo Direct sort of thing and uh FIFA uh, EA will have their own sort of thing. So for me E3 even though E3 actually isn't happening is that two weeks in the summer. Game of Christmas E3 is Christmas, but but in June kind of thing. So, I'd, yeah, I'd, I didn't even twig. I was just like, yep, the game <laughs> the game segment. Um, okay, let me jump back up and like, catch up. Uh, they're making a new UFC game. See, that could be the sports title, lads. That's true. Fight Night. Oh, yeah, there's been rumbles of, of that, to be fair, as well. Uh, weird how this story is about FIFA greed, not the normal EA greed. I know, I know. Imagine, goddamn. Uh, Nietzsche says, oh, did Tamla say something before? I've missed that one. Uh, uh, 
You need to get to 300,000. There's no mods in chat. Shocking behavior. Oh, there we go. Uh, I'm on 155k. <laughs> Soon. <Yeah. laughs> um, EA Sports Winter Olympics. I can't see them doing that, you know. They, they used to do that, but that's because video games have pushed on so much. To do those seasonal sort of tie-ins now, you need to always be iterating. If not, you get below par releases. That's why I think you'll see things like Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games because they're not taken seriously. Whereas if EA are doing it, people want, like, I want to feel the inertia of me pulling back the bow and then letting go at the right time. I need, I need the, the resistance, which you can feed through your haptic controls on your mm. PS5, by the way. It feels just like pulling back on a bow. Okay, we get, we get it, PlayStation. Um, so... Yeah, no, not for me. Uh, unless they go and try and release F one twenty three at the start of the season. Uh, when does that season start? I will say yes because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it'll be a new UFC a a game, and it was confirmed they're working on one. The thing is, confirmed that they're working on one. They've already confirmed that they're working on Burnout, but that's not already in that list either. So they might be working on a UFC game, but they haven't confirmed an annual release window yet. So they may mm. push that back as well. I mean, they might not. But you never know. Uh, maybe ICU could lower it uh, this one time to 150k, uh, 155k for me to apply now. Uh, have you ever seen? Have you ever seen Mortal Kombat? Because uh, Raiden says, "I don't think so." There you go. <laughs> I was going to say Raiden says, "No." <laughs> <laughs> Raiden says, "Nah, me. I don't think so, mate." <laughs> Uh, just give me the Gamescom ticket info. Uh, <laughs> Lake showing us. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Medal of Honor could could be could be. I mean, they, they need they need to sort out their FPS situation right now because ain't nobody playing twenty forty two anyway. Battle battle no no. Uh, uh, Nietzsche is talking in binary. What does that say, Nietzsche? What what, what you saying? What you saying? Um, so when it, what was it he was telling me the other day like someone like if there is uh, someone calls him a bot he sends a message in binary back <laughs> uh uh where do we go i'm dying for some new breath of the wild 2 gameplay aren't we all well i say we all i'm i'm, I'm not i'm not you know now iceman's at 297.9k Woo! Woo! close iceman are you are you are you saving for the mod application or are you just saving because you can uh, Winter Olympics don't sell, that's true. Uh, F1 starts in March. Oh, there you go. Um, they can and have said that's not possible because it takes way too long to get the license approval from the teams in F1. That's why it releases midsummer. Oh, okay. Uh, took me a while to translate as I haven't done Banner in ages, but uh, are you really, are you really, which kind, Robot Wars or Star Wars? David, share for the class. What did he say? <laughs> um, okay, moving ahead. So that's EA Sports having undisclosed titles. Um, do you know what we are going to do? We are going to pause on the Steam's most wishlisted game because it's an article on the day before and it's something that I want to spend a bit of time talking about. So we're going to reshuffle that one. Yeah. For those that haven't seen it, um, I will bring this up on the screen just to show you what we're talking about. The day before, um, I'll hit play on the trailer just as I talk about it. Uh, fast forward into it a little bit. The day before is imagine um, State of Decay, DayZ, uh, The Division... Uh, and The Last of Us all had a cheeky little quad love square. Is it is it love square a thing? I know a triangle is, but uh, but yeah, it can't be a, it can't be a, it can't be a triangle, yeah. can it? Uh, and then they spaffed out a baby video game that had all of the potential of all of them. Then that is what the day before is. The thing with the day before is it sounds too good to be true, and uh, this being delayed by a year is, is almost I mean it's, it's, a, it's a bit disappointing but it's also kind of what I need to hear because it's almost them going yeah do you know what what we've promised is too good to be true nobody's really said it, uh, seen it or played it we need an extra year to make it as good as we want it to be um, so this is it on screen I do want to spend a bit of time talking about this so it has been delayed by nearly, nearly a year so I will put uh, it even says there the day before a mix of Daisy, The Last of Us and The Division there you go uh, it didn't mention State of Decay but I will add that into there um, so we will talk about this article but we are uh, scheduling that one into tomorrow's scoop because I want a little bit of time and we're almost out of time so we do have two smaller articles that we can uh, fly through without going too much over uh, and that is this one from John the Midler at VGC, which says Gotham Knights will no longer be released for PS4 and Xbox One. So the game was previously uh, slated to come to last gen consoles. So Gotham Knights will no longer be released for PS4 and Xbox One. It has been 
announced. Coinciding with the release of new gameplay footage on Tuesday, Warner Brothers Games issued the following statement. Gotham Knights is scheduled to launch worldwide on October 25th, 2022. Please note, to provide players with the best possible gameplay experience, the game will re release on PS5, Xbox Series X and S, and PC, and will not be playable for PS4 or Xbox One consoles. Uh, end quote. Gotham Knights is being developed by W Games Montreal and led by creative director Patrick Redding, who previously directed Splinter Cell titles Conviction and Blacklist. We can pause on that there. It does go on and talk about it being delayed and things, which we've covered on the scoop before. But a game is essentially being hamstrung, either hardware-wise or from development cycle-wise, by the previous gen. Uh, Warner Brothers Games has decided to cut off that hamstring and then, you know, uh, just progress forward looking at next gen only. Do you think that's the smart move, babe? Yeah, but it's 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 unfortunate for the people who was obviously still not being able to get hold of a PlayStation 5 uh, or a new Xbox console. And this game, unfortunately, won't be coming out for them. I understand the limitations that they have. They're obviously, the team isn't big enough to be able to create two different generations worth of a game. We're going to start to see this more and more within the next 12 months, I reckon, where games that they said that might be available or will be coming out on older gen consoles will probably just get scrapped. It's a shame. And I think this this generation has been the fastest for uh, companies to drop the 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 previous gen like you'd usually see games coming out for like maybe two years maybe three years at a push and then it starts to wean them out but it feels like within the first 18 months they're gone do you know what fuck that we can't we can't have the we don't have the time we don't have the resources we don't have the money to be able to work on two separate um generations of the same game so we'll just abandon it it seems to be the fastest that they've ever done that which is a shame again for people who aren't, can't get hold of a newer gen console but i suppose it's just the way the video games are going now, isn't it? If you can't play it on the best system, then you have to wait until you can. Yeah, no, I, it's it's a shame for for those that don't have access to it. Generally, I would be like, um, oh well, generations is generations. Um, we are in a little bit of a different world at the moment because Xbox hasn't really been generational. Xbox has been like, fuck it, it's a box with different capabilities. PlayStation was like, we believe in generations, but then Horizon Zero Dawn and things like that were backwards compatible. I mean, Ratchet and Clank wasn't, so we've had some examples of it just being next-gen only. This I don't have a problem with. It's always been in video games, and if it means that the game is not technically hamstrung, uh, hamstrung or... Um, it's, it's a case of the devs are just freed up because we, we're in a world where people go, we, we we don't want crunch. We don't want people being overworked. And if people are having to, to f figure out ways to essentially make a next-gen game backwards compatible to play on it, that doesn't just happen. That requires mm. de de dev resource and time. So, yeah, it's a sh it is a shame. But if, it's, if it makes the end content better, I'm all for it. it. It means some people miss out on it because they don't have that hardware. But if that is the case, then that game was never meant for them because it was meant to be something that that hardware could never do. So they aren't missing out on something that will never be possible for them in that sort of sense. So, yeah, it's a bit dismissive, probably because I have a next-gen console in, in some part. Um, it's not meant to be like, oh, fuck you guys. Um, yeah. But... Um, it's yeah if it makes the overall experience better more more solidified and avoids cyberpunk-esque sort of like backwards compatibility cash grab stuff then yeah okay i'm all for it it would be wrong of me to say this is bad when i've saying cyberpunk should have just done that um so yeah that that is what it is ads did ask as well what's happening with state of decay um we did cover it uh, at the start of last month, I think it was. Um, I, I don't know if it was that exact article, but Undead Labs has faced allegations of sexism and bullying. And within that whole article, I think it's that one. It could be wrong. I didn't go through it, obviously, because I'm on stream. But, but it does talk about there's been all sorts of studio issues with people leaving and things like that. And we think that could be part of the reason why we haven't heard anything on State of Decay. Um, not just the allegations, but the fact that this team shuffles changes and things like that so it does mention the fact that um if it's the right article it does mention the fact that it's been a long time since we first saw that video like not e3 gone but e3 before or whatever uh so yeah too long um to be fair to weapon games they used to release in mid-august so for them to cut the release to end of june is impressive uh timeless i can't wait for this kind of thankful it's been delayed as I need to get a better pc to be able to run it um 
Uh, when Cody's took it on, it released September to November. Um, F1 2010, 11, 12 was September time. Um, can't wait for the new F1 game. Pre-order already in on Xbox. Nice. Uh, wonder if Miami will be better in game than it was IRL. I mean, what what was up with with, with Miami? I don't know. Need your yeah. theme post check. So I'm sitting up as we jump into the final story. One that Bibby is absolutely super excited for. He always talks super positively about Resident Evil Reverse. Don't you, Bibby? In the right, <laughs> Yeah, nice. Okay, he agrees. Let's move ahead. Um, I I apologize. Um, I I don't know how to pronounce this name. O i s i n. Like I. I have had this name said to me before, but then again, I don't know if this is the Irish version or if yeah. this is another international, but it was like something like Washino or something like, but I could be completely wrong. Yeah. Um, and uh, Mr. Samantha's mate's son is called, it, it, it's, it's called that, but we just call him Ush. So you're probably on the right lines. So Ushin, Waishin, Oisin, O-I-S-I-N, I don't know. Um, and then the surname is confusing me as well. Kunke? Kunke? Uh, apologies for butchering your name. But, you know, I said a bunch of stuff, so hopefully within that I got close enough. And <laughs> if you do watch the scoop, because obviously you do, then do feel free to let me know. Um, but your article does say, um, this is on VG247, that Resident Evil Reverse shows signs of life on Stadia, of all places. So the multiplayer game was delayed into a vague window of 2022, but a new age rating in Europe implies news might be coming soon. So Resident Evil Reverse could possibly finally be coming out soon, as it recently received a rating in Europe for the Stadia version of the game. As spotted by Gematsu, the silence in Resident Evil Reverse news has been broken by an 18 rating for the uh, from the Peggy for the game uh, from Peggy for the game on Stadia. That's pretty much it, but we haven't really heard anything about the game since it got delayed to sometime in 2022. According to Gamatsu, the PS4, Xbox One and PC versions of the game were rated a year ago on May the 7th, which is odd considering how much of a delay the game received. Um, we have seen some gameplay of the six-player deathmatch uh, game here and there, and thanks to betas, uh, here and there, thanks to betas, but again, there's been a weird silence around it since the delay. In it, players are able to mutate themselves into various resi monsters, so that it can come out on top. Of course, players will also be able to play as a range of heroes and villains like Claire, Redfield, Leon, Ada, Jill, Hunk. Thanks. Nice. And Chris. Dido. Good after morning. Good after morning. Have you not have you not been in already? Thank you very much for 14 months, Tido. Nice. Oof. Nice. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love you. Um uh yes matches can uh, can have four to six players and once a player dies their body is turned into a powerful bioweapon that other players can use against one another uh the multiplayer was meant to come free with every copy of the incredibly popular resident evil village obviously that didn't end up happening but i think many players were just happy that uh, with what has become everyone's favorite tall woman lady dimitrescu ratings do normally suggest some kind of news as to when a game might release so this rating for stadia does imply at the very least a release date is coming soon if it does come out soon it'll be something to keep everyone occupied while they wait for the heavily rumored resident evil 4 remake that resi creator shinji mikami really wants to be better than the original okay babe mm. everyone's talking about resident evil 4 remake yeah. everyone's talking about not resident evil reverse anyway let's put it that way but bizarrely in may piss off ghost Piss off, ghost. <laughs> mm -hmm. In May 2022, Stadia and Resident Evil Reverse could be the match made in heaven that nobody expected. What are your thoughts? Well, my immediate thought was there's going to be just as many people playing on Stadia than there is on any other console, which, quite frankly, is going to be zero. Um, I mean, it's it's a shame. Th this, but it's this got to game... be three users, easy, on Stadia. <laughs> the entire Stadia base... Um, it's it's a shame. I, I don't. Ugh. There's so much that I could dissect here, but I genuinely will be here forever if I try and do that. Which again, I keep on saying it's a shame, but it genuinely is. It's not. I'm not angry. I'm not sad. I'm just bitterly disappointed, Graham. It's just one of these games that's just had so much time and attention being put into it that's just not going to do very well. But other projects could have been done in this at the same time. I'm not saying that nothing else is being worked on, the focus and all attention on this. It just seems to be that eggs are being put in a particular basket and I, I'm still trying to rack my head around why. 
Like this code is still in my Resident Evil Village box and I still haven't redeemed it and I'm thinking twice about whether or not I ever am. I feel like it's going to be one of them that I need to look at how many people are, one, going to be playing it, two, how it plays, and three, is it going to be worth my time? And I can guarantee the question to, uh, the answer to all of those is going to be no. Hell no. Hell no. So I'll wait to see, because this could just be one of them things that, they, oh, someone's just gone to said to Dave in the corner of the room and said, did you ever get round to putting it on Peggy? Did you ever get a rating for the Stadia version? He's gone, oh, shit, no, we're still working on that? All right, okay, no problems. I'll just speak to the Peggy guys and get a rating for it over on Stadia. It's, See, I'm a massive, I'd... massive Resident Evil fan. I know all oh, about Oh, yeah, the biggest. It. Yeah, Huge. So, so I know that... Uh, I don't really know. Is it Outbreak? Is that the one that people want? Yes, like that's that? what oh, yeah. that's... So, so that's, I'm, yeah. I'm a massive Resident Evil fan, so my own input, and I'm absolutely not just plagiarising Bibby's previous comments, but yeah, they should have been working on Resident Evil Outbreak. Yeah, but instead we get this <laughs> below par fucking <sighs> reverse thing. God damn it. Even DLC for Village Graham. They're, they're one of the most popular Resident Evil games that's come out in the last 10 years. DLC should have been in and out. It should have been out by it for this game now. This game is now 14 months old, Resident Evil Village, and we haven't had any kind of DLC for it yet, which is, isn't is worrying because I feel like the story finished itself. It, it, didn't, it probably is one of the games that doesn't need any DLC, but you were just thinking, is there another side of this game that I haven't seen yet? Is there any way that I can go back to Ca uh, Castle Dimitrescu? Like, it, do you know what I mean? There's there's so many different avenues that they could have gone down, but I feel like Resident Evil Reverse ain't it, bruv. No, I agree. I agree. In 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 the modern environment, there's always that old cinematic like angle of your story should be complete by the time the credits go up. You go to your old school Scorsese type filmmakers. I think he's maybe maybe him, if not someone of that ilk, has been quoted as saying like the Marvel after credit scene stuff is bullshit. If it was really important, it'd have been in the film, not after the credits. But, but I'm thinking, okay, that's that's from a different type of storytelling. And video games mm -hmm. to movies is a different type of storytelling. Yes, the story should be complete when the credits roll or after the credits roll. In the game, it should be complete. You shouldn't have to wait for DLC because that's extra content outside of the game. DLC, yeah. if you have to pay more for it, it shouldn't be part of it. That said, in in a modern world where you've got a game that's as big and as as, as immersive as the Resident Evil universe, bringing you Village, which was a, a a good to great game. It wasn't the best game in the world, but but I watched Bibi and I thought I had a good time watching him, mainly because I was clipping him up and making him into the uh, Screaming Cowboy and stuff like that, but that's fine. Um, so I watched it and had a good time watching it um i wouldn't be against that game having something afterwards and you would have thought that if they've built enough time and, and effort into making something that looks yeah. as good as it does that has as many good ca um characters voice actors and, and artists that worked on the game to make it as good as it is surely yeah. you would have already pre-drafted some additional content yeah I, I just yeah i just don't, i find it bizarre that we're at this point that that capcom somehow managed to spaff out Resident Evil 2 remake, 3 remake, and Village in like a 24-month period almost, like January, January, January. I know it wasn't that, but it was kind of-ish that. Um, to bring out those three games back to back to back and then yeah. all of a sudden just not manage some DLC, I find, or, or Reverse, I'm like, what? What is going they're on here? They're on so much of a roll at the moment after Resi 7. Remake 2, Remake 3, and Village. Like, that is four games that have brought Resident Evil fans back into it and gone, do you know what? They can tell stories again. I mean, two of them were remakes, but there were remakes. Like, the story isn't necessarily the exact same as the original games, but they can tell stories again. And that's, I thought, what we were going to get. Spoiler alert, I'm going to tell you the ending of Resident Evil Village. If you, if you haven't played it by now, you're probably not going to play. But anyway, Ethan dies, and his daughter Rose, at the end of it, turns it, it was she it's like way into the future so maybe 14 15 years his daughter's a teenager rather than being a baby that has that is at the beginning of resident evil village my immediate thought was that's going to be the next installment of the game rather than it being dlc so i don't know how they, they, they could potentially wrap up a storyline with that one um but you could do they like could have, yeah. Prequel character building story, like yeah. The Left Behind DLC, where it was it was during The Last of Us ish kind of. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be after it. It could be before yeah. it, and and, and so, so. that's it. Like, you, there's so many different characters. The, the the biggest downfall of Resident Evil Village was the whole marketing was around 
the Dimitrescu yeah, the Castle. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and the and the and the characters that was in it. Whereas realistically, that was the first hour of the game. And you get to go to the castle, you get to meet the ladies, you get to kill the ladies, and then you move on to the next thing. But the whole marketing was around that castle and the ladies that were in there. I I kind of feel it, like that like that's possibly the reason why we don't have DLC, because they've gone, Oh, well our DLC was to talk a little bit more about Ethan and Rose or whatever, but people want these ladies, so rewrite yeah. the script, get more people back in the studio, and shoot more content because that will just turn <laughs> out money. In the meantime, well, we'll give them a Lady Dimitrescu tub of G fuel, which is seventy foot yeah. tall kind of thing, just to settle the. You know, it was smart marketing. They doubled down on something that was working for them. A giant, tall, goth, large-chested lady was taking up the. It was taking the internet by storm. And why wouldn't you double down on that kind of marketing thing if people are already running with it? You just it, that's marketing 101 so people are talking about your game and the characters that are in it carry on talking about the game and the characters that are in it you must have and just then, thought um, like someone sat there like has gone oh this is a pretty cool character everyone likes Lady Dimitrescu yeah nice and then someone's gone um, <laughs> don't go and part up <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, no, someone's gone like you do realise that uh, she's only in it for like an hour and it's like oh, what <laughs> <laughs> no, but then obviously, yeah. I mean, the, the first bit that we see, and then she's obviously in it later on in the game. No, there is there is no later on in the game. It's like, yeah. oh, fuck. Well, we've got all this, out. <laughs> all this social stuff, all of our trailers, <laughs> the fucking crossovers with G Fuel are all on this character, and she's in it for like an hour. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, it worked for him, and it was a wildly successful game. Um, watching the Dr. Do- Do- Disrespect play through it was a hell of a ride. Um, How many times did they play through it? He finished it two times back to back, <laughs> back to back. <laughs> yeah, he finished it. Yeah, but it was again. I don't know where they're going with this. I don't know where. I don't know what the end goal is with this. Whether or not it's just going to be one of them that's going to be free to play. They can't charge money for this. I can't see it doing very well, Graham. And that's a worry because we've been through this with like the Operation Raccoon City and things like that. Games that try to take things from other games, which Oper- Operation Raccoon City was a carbon copy of what Gears of War was without the Gears of War goodness. It was it was shit. So I don't know where we're going to be going with this. It's a, it's a massive waste of time, in my opinion. I and hope... I, I, I don't want to say that about Capcom games. Yeah, I hope that they don't try and go, well, yeah, we, we can we can make a multiverse or a, or a BR or a, that sort of approach. If, look, tag words that'll make us money because this is going to be a success. I hope they don't go in that because it's, it's if you go in aiming that, you're probably not going to get that. So I hope they just come out with a, do you know what? Let's make something cool that um, we can actually use. It's too late really to be a part of Village now. So have this as something that we can use as the first beat leading up to the fall remake or whatever that's what i would do now at this point if it isn't a case of that they've had to reshoot to make some lady d content or whatever i would do this as a, okay we're already too late now what's what's an extra month going to do if we can use it as the first beat of the next thing that's where i would go with it but yeah we'll see you just installed something into my mind that i didn't even think about but a resident evil battle royale in raccoon city would be fucking mega <laughs> That would be so cool. Uh, all at night as well, and you only, you've only got uh, it's it's obviously full moon, so there's a little bit of light in the sky, but it's just street lamps and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, that would be fucking mint. S- suddenly, a crate drops in, and rather than getting like a uh, an arm sniper rifle or whatever, you get a little tube of injective fluid, and then all of a sudden, like you saw someone run off to the crate that fell behind a building. You're like, oh, I wonder what was in his crate, and then you just hear. <laughs> One fucking some big bloke, <laughs> some big bloke in a black hat or whatever just run, ah! <laughs> like yeah. this shit. Honestly, that would be amazing. Like instead of it getting like the Thanos's Iron Gauntlet that was in Fortnite, it, you just turn into Mister X, X or Nemesis. Yeah. Oh, that was so sick. <laughs> anyway do you know what we're going to leave Bibby's Erection there and we're going to wrap things <laughs> up uh, thank you that, uh, for everyone that dropped in including Krusty I did see you drop in thank you very much for dropping in Krusty we're talking, we're talking to him in West Stream earlier I saw him in, in Ish in games last night I saw his name in the kill feed while I was playing a few games with Beans last night uh, comments um, Tito dropped in saying uh, what have I missed? Drama? Let me guess. <laughs> and then mm. Nietzsche said, fuck you, uh, which is nice. Uh, which, which is where the He's piss- always so supportive, <laughs> isn't he? <laughs> That's where the piss-off ghost reference from yeah. came from. Um, 
Uh, where did we get to? There are some people who think Circle is shoot. Uh, yes, I am one of them people. No, no, no. Uh, if Circle equates to the left button on an Xbox controller, they would be right. Also known as X, uh, says Tito, or cross on PS. Yet, yeah, to be fair, the fact that you're calling the square button an X does make me cross on PS. Fuck's sake, mate. Um, uh but yeah, it's not a cross, it's an X, because you can't even call it a cross, because that's just stupid, even though that's exactly what it should be. And, <laughs> and this logic that defines that, no, it's an X, not a cross. God damn. Um, shooting too early. Uh, now you sound like Mrs. Nietzsche. Although she doesn't lull, she's more of a whoop. <laughs> Uh, nice. <laughs> I just had to Google what a PS controller looked like. No, those people are wrong. Square slash X is shoot. Square on a PlayStation slash X on an Xbox controller issue. I was like, what? You shoot with two different buttons? The same what the fuck? Mm. Uh, I get you. I get you. Uh, Dimitrescu Origins, maybe. Uh, large, big chested goth lady. I assume Nietzsche is a massive fan. <laughs> uh, good job it's Capcom. If it was Square, then we'd see Dimitrescu NFTs. Yeah, I mean, you, I mean Cap, have, have Capcom said that they're against it yet? Or have they... Oh, no, I don't know. Um, That's... Now they've sold it off already. <laughs> mm. uh, tube of injective fluid. Nice. That's exactly what it is. Big uh, care package. Tube of injective fluid. Jobs are good, and that's what that's that's what it is. I mean, you've not you've clearly not seen Resident Evil the movie. Hey, we're down in in the what's it called? The hive or whatever in the umbrella the hive. Yeah. And 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 there's there's the Red Queen and stuff like that. And she's like, "You're all going to die down here because that man has a tube of injective fluid." Jobs are good, and seen it. There you go. Prove me wrong. Bang anyway, on. On, on that bombshell. <laughs> we are going to finish. Thank you for everyone for dropping in for scoop number three of the week uh and this is only the third stream of the week the fourth stream will be taking place in about four and a half hours time ish i am going to be joined actually playing i'm not just going to be chasing crates billy no mates i'm going to be chasing crates with a mate lotus is back tonight <laughs> as i was talking about in, in west he had his leaving party last week and he just couldn't stay away could he i was talking about in west stream it's like the dfs sale is it for what is it's, it's ending no no join in for the for the last ever crates with mates oh. until next week good news crates with mates is back so yeah this week's crates with mates is going to be the last one ever until the next mm. one uh yeah. So, so yeah there you go get that on the asset <laughs> yeah. um so yeah no lo uh, being lonely with no homies tonight exactly mm. <laughs> being lonely with no homies <laughs> yes lotus will be jumping in as will others i know beans uh, uh said that he could be around i think he is um um and Nietzsche usually is. Also, Spike was throwing in yesterday, so there's there's at least five people that want in. So mm -hmm. so we've we'll be running some duos, and then we'll we'll have bodies for squaddies as well yeah. later on. So hey. feel free to join. Nice, uh, good scoop. Glad I caught none of it. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, Tito. Thank you very much for 14 months and for missing everything. Nice, Nietzsche redo uh, redeemed. Join the squad for five K sprinkles. Do you know what? Do you know what, Nietzsche? You can have them back because that's that's a given. Yeah, uh, take them back. Re reject and refund but i'm keeping your posture check stuff because i did set up although briefly nice uh we are going to disappear though do feel free to join us 6 30 ish tonight but before that mr bib is there anything you'd like yes. to add yes thank you very much to each and every one of you that tagged us in the ea sports uh breaking news yesterday that was obviously helped shape our show but if you want to help shape the two remaining shows which are thursday and friday there are two ways that you can do so first of all find us on social media it is at ice cream world across all major social media platforms or alternatively get involved with our discord if you're watching us and any of our on-demand services go into the description below all the links that you require will be listed there for you but all we need from you is a url plus your false impressions we will then give you our false impressions on the very next show which will be at what time tomorrow mr graham day 10 a m ish <laughs> 10 a.m. ish, 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 ish. We'll both be in the studio, ish. We should, we're planning to be for the first time in like 17 weeks. An actual yeah. studio stream. So do feel free to join us for that. But we're going to disappear. We'll see you at half six tonight for some PUBG fun times. Until then, stay, stay frosty. Stay frosty.